Hiya. We're going to talk about Polkadot. We're going to talk about the real, true value of Polkadot in the BTC pairs. I did a video. Sorry about the webcam. I'm not actually ginger, weirdly. Probably see that. Um, didn't talk about the BTC pairs. I did it on purpose, right? Because I want to do a special video, and this is the day I do it. So if you're new, please do subscribe. If you like my content, leave a like. It helps the algorithm. Let's get over 20,000 views. That is the plan for today because this one's important. Let me talk about this. I've moved it over to the BTC pairs to show you something. Now, please pin your ears back. The BTC value of every asset is what the current price of your altcoin is. Yep, I'm going to leave that to it. I've lost you. I know. Sorry. But be serious, right? We need to talk about it because we're, yeah, we're at that number. Okay, what does that equal in English? Let me just change this because it's obviously moved. $6.61. We're going to go through that whole chart, the BTC pair chart, to go through it in more detail. Now, if you multiply said number times by the price of Bitcoin, it equals that. So if you want to have a bit of fun and really go deep with it, and after this video, if you can pinpoint some of your levels on this BTC chart and maybe do like, well, what if Bitcoin is, say, $80,000 or $100,000? What would my price of Polkadot be? Solana, Dogecoin, whatever. You can do that, right? Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room. I've had a few little issues with a couple of people in the Polkadot ecosystem. Am I bothered? No. Am I selling my dot? No, I am, however, going to stake it on um, Bifrost instead of doing it natively on the ledger just because of the simplicity of it and the lightning mode to unstake it much faster. However, Polkadot for me, I think we'll do all right. There's a few little things that I disagree with in terms of treasury spending, but that's my opinion and it doesn't reflect my investment status. I'm still going to be holding it, so don't worry. But what I will say is this. I'm getting a little bit more kind of optimistic with what is happening with Polkadot in terms of the 2.0, and it may well start to reflect in the chart. Now, this is the USD chart. Looking all right, isn't it? But we need to talk more about the BTC one for obvious reasons. Let's talk about it. Let's go in. Let's do it. Let's go for it. Because it looks fucking awful. Oh, we need to go through it, don't we, boys and girls? So let's look at it. Now, Anything that you hear on this channel is obviously not financial advice, but this looks lovely. It looks nice, it could go higher, and it could make some BTC. Now, I'm going to put a disclaimer in here, and I'm going to say it right now. I will be selling all of my DOT into Bitcoin this cycle when it hits a certain number. And you're probably going to find it out on this video as we go through it, because we need to look at it. Let's look at the weekly time frame. What we're going to do, we're going to simplify this proper easy. Now, this is going to be very much tongue in cheek in a way because I know I'm going to say it, but I'm going to say it anyways. Everyone's different with profit taking, right? But the way I look at this, I've got my doubts into my belief that I feel, get my words out, Ash, come on, that this may not go all time high in the BTC pair because I think Bitcoin's going to be very powerful. We've got to look at the obvious here. What if it goes to something like 5,000 sats or 7,000 sats? What would that be the price? So if we go back in time and put in, say, 7,000 um, yeah, 7, sats, at the current live price, that would be $30. It's not bad, is it? Let's be honest. It's gone a few multiples, hasn't it? So every single dot will be worth $30. Every single dot is 7,000 Satoshis. If you want to do the maths, you can. If I want to simplify it for you, you can find your however much it is worth in BTC. Go to, say, 7,000 Satoshis and do the sums given that number. Right? Kind of obvious. However, let's talk about the pricing. There's some really nice juicy levels on these charts. These charts are looking relatively nice. So... The first juicy level that I like the look of is this closure around basically 3,700 and 4,000 around here. That to me 
is going to be the first obvious profit taking zone in the BTC pair. The next obvious one for me is this one, 5,000. We'll see it in the chart in more detail in a second. And the last one that I would be really getting twitchy would be up here around this kind of six, $7,000 region. I'm gonna put it here. Now, this is, for me, my opinion. And when we look at those kind of levels, they look relatively nice and neat and tidy. I'd probably move this down a little bit in terms of where that spike is. But when we're talking about where this can go, this is kind of it on the fib. Now the fibs aren't too far away on a lot of them. You can see this, not that massively too far away, but this is kind of an obvious level, but it's also quite a biggie. This one's also an obvious one, so it depends on what you want to use. 50% kind of on the nose, and then this one in between the 786 and the 618. For me, the fibs are good, but I would rather use some sort of structure alignment with this one too. So again, make your own piece. If you want to make bigger boxes, you can. Now, as I said before, when we talk about exit plans, it's kind of very, very, very important. So what we're going to do, we're going to simplify this very, very easily by just drawing some boxes. So this one would be, for me, an easy, obvious TP1 in the BTC pair. You know, you cannot, you know, take, I'm not going to put percentage on here because it's going to be very subjective. There's a TP there. In the BTC pair, 100%, there's a level there. If you want to go a bit early, you can, but for me, it's kind of, you, kind of you can, but it depends on how much Bitcoin you want, right? So I'll leave that to you. The next obvious one, as I said before, you know, we've got to be obvious here. You know, you can't go too mental in terms of, oh, it's going to run forever. It might not. That's a thing. And I always worry about this side of it. Now, as I said before, you may never get towards all-time high levels. I'll probably put that in, uh, above here somewhere around this point because this is where it starts getting very dicey. That to me is obvious structure levels. It's like clear cut. It's like obvious levels. Now, if you value your Bitcoin like me, you would want to make multiples, right? There's multiples here. If you are buying today at 1500, there's multiples on there. If it gets to here and you're really happy and you've taken some profit off the table, probably going to be all right. You're probably going to be fine, especially in terms of the BTC Satoshis. So when we go back in time and we go, well, what is a value going to be? So if I go, so let's just say, for example, and I'll get my calculator out my phone, is if we do 0 0.000, 7,000, okay, times by, let's just say Bitcoin is 100K. Let's just say it's 100K. That would make Polkadot a $70 asset. It's kind of simple, but people will try not to convince yourself in terms of that. Now, that being said, I have said that Polkadot could go much higher in value. Of course it can. $70, I'll be freaking over the moon. Could go over 100. What could that be? Well, that could be Bitcoin could be much higher than 100K, or this could be around all-time high or beyond all-time high. But for me, I'm not going to be too hasty on taking profit, but I'm going to be realistic. I don't want to be kind of caught in a position, but when I look at my portfolio, let's just say random number, I put one BTC in Polkadot, right? Easy. And then when you're looking at your portfolio and you're thinking, wow, I've now got five in profit, and you think Bitcoin could well be a very, very good asset to hold for the long term, you can convert some of that into BTC and hold that and then still hold some dot as well, right? That's the point I'm making. So for me, these are obvious. If we're going to go into let it run territory, which we can, it's obviously going to be around this point where the top has been in the past, kind of obvious, um, and then up to a potential extension level. We do not know where this cycle is going to take us. It's very much a gray area. Why? It's a second cycle for DOT, right? It's had a horrific bear market. It's only just starting to slowly wake up in the BTC pair. And this is why I'm thinking, well, these are very, very clear and obvious levels, right? It looks neat and tidy. It kind of works. And for me, it's obvious. Just be careful. The problem is people look too much at the USD charts. And yeah, it all goes with Bitcoin, obvious reasons. But you're missing the point of this. You're missing it completely. I've been telling people to dollar cost average at certain points, but I've always said, be wary of what you're buying in. 
it doesn't matter what you're buying sometimes, but if you're like wanting to keep some BTC in your portfolio, probably better off not buying for a while, you know, in terms of the altcoins. Some of them are all right now, but a couple of months ago, if you're buying USD and you're already happy with your USD, yeah, cool. But if you're looking to convert at some point, yeah, not good. Anyways, I talk a lot more about this on my Patreon. If you want to check it out, feel free to. I will put this exit plan on my Patreon as well. But yeah, I think this is an important chart for analysis. I'm not going to go too deep with it in terms of where it is because of what we're doing. But there's a potential area here where this can start to break out. This is the weekly time frame on it. We've had an impulse. We've started to make, for the first time in a very long time, a higher low. I will come back to this in a couple of weeks' time to see where we're at. But there's some potential nice targets up here if this is going to continue. First thing it needs to do on the weekly, get above the EMA 21. The daily is looking much better. As you can see, it's looking a little bit nicer. Not amazing, but it's certainly looking nicer. It's had a nice wave up, it's corrected, and it's starting to break structure. It has broken structure here now, which is good to see, right? However, it needs to continue going higher. There's a long way for this to go. So this video is perfectly timed. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you very, very soon. Mm -hmm.